Welcome to what was meant to be part five of this series documenting whether I can turn this spare room in my flat in London into a professional or at least full-time mixing and mastering studio. The plan in this video was to document how testing whether a subwoofer would help fill in my null or not. Now, I stumbled on some problems. Firstly, I managed to delete all the information that I recorded for that video uh, and all the measurements that I took, but I can summarize it in a nutshell. I did the sub crawl test, put the subwoofer here in the listening position, not at listening height, which apparently I should have done. And I crawled around the room and I corroborated some placements with measurements that ChatGPT came up with. Tried it in the middle, I tried the sub in the corner, I tried the sub in alignment with the idea being that in these different positions, the subwoofer would activate different modes in the room and therefore potentially not be canceled out at the same point as the speakers are, i.e. 94 Hertz in this room. However, that wasn't the case. The single subwoofer did absolutely nothing to even attempt to try and fill in that null. The key apparently is to have two subwoofers. I don't have two, I only have one. So I had the heads in a reasonable sounding position in the room. I bought Trinov in, flattened the speakers to an extent and the, the heads sounded good. A very perfectly mixable place to be in. And then I thought, well, hang on, the Amphion 218 sounded better in my old studio. They activated less, less energy in the room and their MTM format um, narrows the horizontal dispersion uh, and therefore the listening area. So therefore minimizing the effects of the room. So I thought they might measure better in the room. They didn't really do too much uh, different, but we can see that for ourselves right now. So this is about as optimized as I could get the heads. The null was at seven and a half dB, but it's quite wide. That was an issue. The Amphions, however, do measure better and the null is narrower, but that is still at about seven and a half decibels. So I went to the ceiling cloud. I lowered it as much as I could due to how I mounted it. I couldn't lower it anymore. And then I put a slab of 180 centimeters long by 45 centimeters wide by 20 centimeters thick rock wool. And this is a good indication of what the ceiling cloud did for the heads. So we're at about seven and a half decibels there. And we've literally taken a decibel off with the ceiling cloud. I then added another one to see if that would do any more, potentially take away another decibel. That's just behind the listening position. That didn't actually do anything else. That was ineffectual. What I've learned basically so far is the first reflection points are of absolute paramount importance. The second thing I've learned is by adding bass trapping to the back of the room, a mass, you know, 40 centimeter thick, soffits and maybe sometimes distanced off the wall that made the nulls worse every time but it did improve the decay time so then it's a toss-up between decay time and nulls your ears can get used to frequency discrepancies all you have to do is put on a reference track and learn how yours sound against that you can't tune your ears to inaccurate time delays and phase issues. So getting the decay time down, so getting the first reflection points covered and the delay time down is of paramount importance for your phantom center and stereo imaging and depth of sound. I tried every combination of all the panels, including the corner panels going across the floor to wall corners. I tried the base soffit at the wall to ceiling corner at the back, all placed using AMROC to try and target specific frequency issues and uh, there were just variations of the same problem you'd fix one problem you may be lower the null but your decay time would be worse or you'd really fix the decay time and the null would be worse so everything about this is a trade-off you fix one thing and it's it comes at the expense of something else then i got trinov in and calibrated the heads and to be fair they sounded pretty good it was a very mixable very workable room but I didn't stop there because I thought, well, hang on, need to try the Amphions. Tried the Amphions, and there was something about the Amphions that was bothering me. At about 80 hertz, there was a resonance. Now I know the room resonates at 40, 44 hertz, so I wasn't expecting it at 80 other than that is the octave above, so maybe there's a sympathetic resonance with that. And I was hearing something in the heads, but I figured it was to do with the null and Trinov trying to compensate for that. But then I got my head round group delay and at 80 hertz there is a big spike in the group delay on both sets of speakers the heads and the amphions 
And I think that's what I was hearing, is that key, kick frequency kind of do, do, do. There was a sustained element to the transients and it was smearing, masking stuff, so I didn't like that. Now this group delay reading is the time at which those frequencies are taking back to settle down to zero. I was hearing this at 80 and I'm definitely hearing it at 40 as well, but I just figured that was a whole room resonating, but it's all intertwines into the same issue. To target the 40 Hertz, I'm potentially tempted to try some GIK tuned membranes or the PSI AVAA uh, units, but they're so expensive. I definitely can't justify paying for them, but hopefully I'll be testing them in this room at some point and there'll be a video in that if there is. The idea of targeting 40 is that then hopefully we can mitigate the octave at 80 above that. The other thing I came across was, again, feeling like the heads sounded good and the amphians were slightly lacking something in the low end. I started looking into distortion uh, figures. The distortion on the amphians is reasonably flat, give or take a few peaks etc. And you can just about see some third harmonics creeping up here at about 90 hertz. Put the heads on and obviously there's a lot of second and third order harmonics creeping up. Now I'm not so worried about the big ones at 40, but the ones at 60 and 90, their prime kick and bass frequency distortions. The problem with that is what I had in my old studio with the PSIs that were front ported was they sounded rich and full in the studio, but when I took the mixers outside, they weren't translating because what I was hearing in the analog domain wasn't actually in the digital domain of the mix in the computer. So going elsewhere, there wasn't that harmonic information and mixers were sounding a bit weak and a bit anemic and a bit thin. Headphones to the rescue in the old studio, and I'm aware I may still have to do that here. However, that's quite a big difference in distortion levels in the low end. But where it gets really interesting is I measured the heads after Trinov and take a look at this. That's pretty bad. So Trinov is making the speakers sound flat and they sound quite punchy. They sound good, but the low end is clearly sounding rich and thicker and fuller, partly because of this harmonic content, which then means I don't know if I can trust it from a a mixed translation point of view. So this has taken me down another rabbit hole, partly of speaker design, but speaker performance and also Trinov. So I'm gonna try the Mum 6s because I'm pretty sure they're gonna read very low from what those guys have been talking about. And I may also be trying the Dutch and Dutch 8Cs because apparently they can help fill in this null and they just, they work in a way that they don't induce all this distortion that Trinov is clearly inducing. So there'll be a video on that as and when I'm ready to do that. Will I be buying the 8Cs, uh, £12,000 a pair? Again, it's unlikely this was meant to be a quick and cheap exercise. But as I've rabbit holed all these different nuances, expanded my knowledge base on room acoustics and speaker design and all the stuff we're, you know, we're looking into today, I have to leave no stone unturned. This has been time consuming. And it's just, it's got to get to a point where I've just got to get back and get mixing. I actually have projects building up now, which is amazing. So I can just go back to headphones because that's what I did in the old room and I was getting some of the best results of my life, mixing low end on headphones and checking on the speakers. No, I will never be a purely headphone mixer because coming as a musician and a drummer and a live sound engineer, I'm so used to haptics and energy and the vibe that speakers give you, I have to be able to mix on those as well. And if I'm being honest, I think if you want mixers to translate to speakers in elsewhere, you have to check your mixers on speakers. There's, v there's one person I know of who can mix without checking on speakers. He's done quite well. He's, you know, got over three billion streams. So, you know, but he's quite a niche example of that. So in essence, for this series, I'm gonna put this on the shelf for now. I'll be documenting more of this further down the line as and when I try different things. There will be a final video where I talk about the budget, where I talk about the exact final treatment, uh, whatever's in the room, might be the PSI Arvas, might be the Dutch and Dutch 8Cs, or it might just be, do you know what, sod it, I'm happy with everything as it is. I just need to pay attention to the distortion in the low end and mix the low end on headphones. 
but there will be a studio tour giving you all that information at some point. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you to everyone who's been reaching out on Instagram. If you don't follow me on, on Instagram, I am doing daily stories showing people exactly what I'm doing and what the readings are and how crazy I've been going. So thank you to everyone reaching out with their help on Instagram. That's at the Ed Thorne. In the meantime, uh, I've got to get on and get on with some mixes and I've got some speakers for review. I'm taking the opportunity before I settle on a final configuration to review some speakers. Subscribe for those coming. Then I've just got to accept that it is what it is. You're not going to find perfection and I've just got to get on and actually mix. So yeah, on that bombshell, I've been Ed Thorne. It's been emotional. See you on the next one.